assalamu alaikum well uh, today we are going to deal with conversational english it's a sub skill based subject which has already been taken for you by aarti ma'am and lakshmi ma'am um i'm just going to do some part of the second unit i believe you've already finished with the first unit and a little bit of the second unit i'm going to take uh, expressing sympathy i hope it's clear enough because i haven't really prepared any slides for this uh, it's uh, so see expressing sympathy complaining apologizing starting a conversation with a stranger and ending a conversation right so first of all we'll deal with expressing sympathy uh, well we are going through a kind of situation where uh, e every day or at least every alternate day we get to hear some bad news or the other or even in a, even without going to the extreme situation where we get to hear news of someone's death or someone getting lost or someone you know something something or the other keeps happening right so since this subject mainly deals with conversational skills conversation skills would include n more than knowing what to say I believe I personally believe that it is necessary for each one of us to know what not to say. See, some people have this tendency of uh, going to the extremes, exaggerating too much, and consequently they end up saying things that are better left alone. See, for instance, if someone has passed away and you come across a a, a, um, a person who's grieving for the dead, instead of merely showing or probably using very simple polite and sincere words to okay sorry for the inconvenience but uh, as i was saying every day we come across a some person someone who is who has lost something or someone right so it is better to know how to express your sympathy without coming off as overbearing overbearing as in we tend to somehow uh, tend to make them feel all the more sorry right that should not be the purpose see whenever we say anything whenever whenever we speak something there has to be a certain intent you know some intent in your mind that should you know give give uh, bring about that speech because without intending it the, what what happens is uh, just blindly talking doesn't really help anyone so when you come across someone who is grieving or someone who has lost something keep the intent to console okay to console that person so your intent should be consoling not making that person feel all the more sorry okay so uh, you must have come, come across those kind of people uh, say uh, these people when whenever they come across uh, someone who is grieving they tend to make them cry more yeah that is not the way about you know expressing your sympathy you have to show that you are human enough to understand uh, understand that they have lost someone and 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 uh, you feel sorry for them but at the same time you should provide them the necessary consolation to overcome their grief okay so it it, it does not mean that you go about uh, joking with them or you know making uh, rude remarks or may maybe uh, or belittling their emotions i mean another way of uh, another thing that you should not do when you come across someone who is you know a little down or some or someone who has lost something you should not belittle their emotion belittle is in what we do is uh, sometimes hey, hey, come on what the heck why are you feeling so sorry it's it's just part and parcel of life you shouldn't you know let yourself be beat up about it no that that is not the way to go either okay neither should you make them feel all the more sorry nor should you belittle their emotions or and feelings you should respect their feelings you should understand that they are grieving for something that they have that they have genuinely, genuinely you know uh, loved and and also also you should be able to provide them some consolation in very few words okay not use uh, too many words not exaggerate or not make them uh, you know make their make their loss seem all the more bigger than it is okay so whenever you wish to express sympathy you need to be very cautious see here are some of the common phrases to help you express sympathy so first off one of the most common phrases that is used is i am sorry to hear about okay i am sorry to hear about your difficulties with the boss i know it can be really difficult at times you know something like that i'm sorry i'm sorry to hear about it
I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry you had to go through that. These are the kind of phrases that, that hold some meaning, okay, that you feel bad about it, but at the same time, you are trying to give them some consolation. Again, when someone has, uh, you know, someone is grieving for a loved one's death, you could say like something like this, please accept my condolences. You see this? Please accept my condolences. See? Please accept my condolences. So th this, is, uh, this is one of the ways. Uh, please accept my condolences. Your father was a great man. Instead of saying, please accept my condolences. Your father died. Father passed away. You could simply highlight some good quality of the person that they have lost. Okay? If you personally knew, knew them. Or you could simply say, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Uh, was your father very ill when he, when he passed away? Or you could ask something. Uh, he must have been a really good man to have raised you so well. Or something, you know, uh, yes, you, uh, you, some, some ways, in some way, make them feel cherished, okay? Make them feel that whoever or whatever they have lost is still with them in some form uh, so that they can be consoled, all right? I'm sorry to hear of your loss. Please accept my condolences. It's another, uh, see, another set of words. That's so sad. You lost your job. That's so sad that he doesn't love you anymore. That's so sad. I hope things get better soon. Instead of saying that's so sad, you could simply say that you are hoping for something better for them. Okay? If someone is ill, someone is sick, instead of saying, oh my God, whatever happened to you? Why did this have to come to you alone? You were, you're such a good person. Oh, why should you be burdened with this kind of disease? Instead of saying all of those things that will only make that person all the more frustrated with their position in life, you could give them hope. You could hold out some hope. In fact, in Islam, we are supposed to even to, uh, when you're talking to when you go and visit a sick person, even if that person is about to die, you're not, you're not supposed to tell them that you're going to die. You're not supposed to tell them that you, that they have lost the, lost the fight, lost the fight with the disease, right? You're not supposed to say that. In Islam itself, what you're what you're supposed to tell is give them hope in some form, make them feel good. Of course, few words is not going to matter to someone who is in heavy pain, but still, do your part. Do your part in choosing your words wisely. Okay, so be very cautious. So it doesn't matter what kind of words you choose to speak in front of a happy person because that person is is in his or her own bubble. Okay, in in his or her own happy bubble. But that's not the case with a person who's grieving, right? So when a person is grieving, you ought to be very, very cautious, very, very certain about what kind of words you choose to use in front of that person. Okay. No, again. I can't believe how much bad luck you've had. I hope things get better soon. I mean, it's better to avoid words like you have had bad luck. Instead of saying all of that, you could simply say, uh, yeah, it happens. I know sometimes we have to go through some difficult times. Inshallah, everything will be all right. I hope things get better soon for you. That should be enough. The purpose, the main purpose, the main idea should be to console. Okay console a grieving person i hope you feel better soon yeah, this this phrase really works wonders because what it conveys is that you are genuinely wishing for that person to feel better all right things will not change okay what's gone is gone what's lost is lost but you do come out of a heightened or excited emotional state right i mean excited in the sense some excitable in a wrong sense here is in 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 a despair, someone who is really desolate, someone who is really you know, going through a very rough patch, will not remain in the same state forever, right? They will come out of it, and you will help them somehow to feel better ultimately. Then see, I I'm so sorry you broke your leg. I hope you feel better soon. Stay home for the week. I hope you feel better soon. Yeah. All of these are wonderful phrases that really, uh, you know, um, will convey your regard, your, your genuine regard that you are feeling very, very sorry for that person and also the hope that that person will feel, feel better ultimately. See, there is, um, see, sometimes in the question paper, you are asked to write, um, write conversation between two people. 
in relation to sympathy to, in relation to expressing sympathy so what you could do is you could use person 1 person 2 look at this i hope this is visible to you person 1 person 2 person 1 i have been sick rather uh, i have been rather sick lately now person 2 could be saying expressing sympathy indicating that i hope you feel better soon yeah again another example is given here person 1 you could also name that person if you want person 1 tim has been having a lot of troubles lately i think he might be getting a divorce person 2 i'm sorry to ha- hear about tim's problems i hope things get better for him soon yeah this is in second person this is directly expressing sympathy to uh, to someone who is feeling sick and this is you know this is about a person who is not present there so this is a second person thing okay again another common way of expressing sympathy is through writing you write sympathy notes okay when you hear the news of something something bad happening to someone you could write you could express your sympathy through your words through your written word okay so it's also common to express sympathy in writing here are some common phrases you can use when you are writing sympathy notes see here my heartfelt condolences my heartfelt condolences so condolence should be the idea right my heartfelt condolences on your loss our thoughts are with you she he she or he was a lot of things to many people and will be missed tremendously these are written notes written notes by phrases that you can use in writing a sympathy note or sympathy letter condolence letter i am thinking of you in your time time of loss again if you, when you are expressing sympathy to someone who is at a distance and you are writing to them you could uh, generally uh, we, uh, we don't uh, we no longer rely on postal service right but back then when we were growing up that's that was the only way of communicating between vanimbadi and madras so we would stay in madras and now you know all our relatives will be vanimbadi and would send notes expressing joy happiness sympathy whatever yeah so it was one fine way of uh, expressing yourself yeah look at this i am thinking of you in your time of loss yeah i, I i've heard of your loss and i'm really feeling bad about it i'm really feeling sorry about it and i am thinking of my thoughts are with you even if i'm not there in person my thoughts are with you that's the idea of this this particular phrase we are very sad to hear of your loss with deepest sympathies yeah instead of si- writing uh, yours truly yours uh, uh, sincerely yours uh, obligingly i mean those are outdated terms no lo- nobody uses those things a- anymore yours yours respectfully nobody uses that anymore so when you are finishing a sympathy note it's better to write with deeper sympathies with humble regards with regards with sincerest regards i mean this is what is normally used these days okay so a closing salutation would go something like this no more no more uh, thanking you yours truly i mean it does not work anymore except for well where there are sticklers for convention they are sticking to tradition still so well let them stick anyway you have my sincere sympathy you have our deep sympathy so uh, example sympathy notes dear john so th- here is a sympathy note and ex- as an example for you dear john i heard recently that your mother passed away she was such a wonderful ma- woman please accept my heartfelt condolences on your loss you have our deep sympathy warm regards ken see very short precise at the same time expressing sympathy all right okay our next topic is complaining complaining would be talking about complaints so what are complaints complaints are expressions of displeasure or annoyance as in whenever you're displeased whenever something frustrates you too much because of someone's well poor service or when someone has really gone out of the way to trouble you you can complain you can lodge your complaint and there are various kinds of complaints there are formal complaints there are informal complaints yeah so complaints are expressions of displeasure when you are displeased when you are not happy with some some person service some kind of you know if you are say you are uh, visiting a restaurant you you are going to a restaurant to have your lunch or dinner and it, it they offer a very poor service 
they offer very poor services in the, uh, the food you have ordered is really cold or um, I mean when it is supposed to be hot. Yes, ice creams are supposed to be cold, I understand that. But, you know, a food that is supposed to be hot, if it, if it turns out to be cold, it is served cold for you. And it say you've been kept waiting for a very, very long time instead of just accommodating you in some empty space. Or if the table is dirty, if the spoons that have, that have been served to you is dirty, or if you find something, uh, you know, really obnoxious in <laughs> in whatever gravy that has been served to you. Well, in those cases, you can lodge complaints, okay? And, or if the server, whoever is serving you at, at that point is uh, being very impolite. Impolite, well, you can brush off you know you you, you should not generally uh, at least i feel you should not generally expect people to be obsequious to you as in you know uh, behave as if they are your servants but uh, it is also not okay to take rudeness from people right uh, so in those cases you can lodge a complaint when you're displeased or, or if you're like you know taking up a room somewhere and uh, you know the bed cloth is not good or the, or the toilets are not good you can um, you know lodge a complaint or again you've ordered something you've ordered something uh, through uh, through e-shopping yeah through flipkart or amazon you're not you're not happy with your purchase because it has promised something and you, what, what what has been delivered is something else entirely which is substandard substandard very of something of very poor quality you can lodge complaint okay so in response to an action that is seen by the speaker as unfavorable okay seen by the speaker as unfavorable suppose you want to complain about the pizza you have just ordered because it's too salty what are the expressions needed to express and respond to complaints so this is how you complain. Here are expressions you can use when complaining. I have a complaint to make. You could start off by saying, you could ring up that person, you know, you could ring up that person and say, I have a complaint to make. Or you could say, sorry to bother you, but, you know, sorry to bother you, but I really, um, I'm um, displeased with whatever has happened today. Or, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm afraid I've got a complaint about I'm afraid there is a slight problem with, excuse me, but there is a problem about, I want to complain about, I'm angry about. Please take a screenshot of this, okay? So this will be helpful for you to um, learn these phrases, okay? So whenever you are angry, when, whenever you are displeased, please don't shout it out. Don't be rude, okay? Because sometimes what happens is, not sometimes, most of the time what happens is we get to see only one side of the coin. Okay, we get to see only one side of the coin and the other side would have some very logical, very reasonable, no, you know, reasonable uh, um, excuse, you cannot call it excuse, something very reasonable for what happened, what has caused you displeasure. Okay, so it's better to be very polite and tell them in a very simple, straightforward manner what was wrong instead of throwing in your all your emotional angst into it emotional angst as in uh, all your frustrations all your anger behind your words instead of putting all of that simply state what the problem was why you feel that the service was not good enough what, what went wrong okay so that way you are allowing that person permitting that person to offer an explanation okay offer a possibly it's quite possible that they have a very reasonable explanation for what has caused you so much displeasure okay so complaint can be made complaints ought to be ought to be made if something is not right if if something is not to your satisfaction but those complaints should be done with you know courteousness with courtesy politeness all right see politeness is the hallmark of a refined person of a civilized person, of a of a uh, of a person who has who has been educated, all right. Oh, okay. Even uneducated people are polite. I've seen that, and even educated people can be really nasty. <laughs> I have much experience on that case as well. My point is, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. When you make complaint, try not to be angry. And even if you are angry, just because the um, emotion works 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 in weird ways, you know. Just because you're feeling emotional, it does not mean that you have to express that emotion all the time to all the people. 
all right you have to be very selective about whom you express your emotions to or what kind of expressions you 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 know um, emotions you express because see what happens is anger fuels anger right rudeness fuels rudeness so if you are going to be rude if you are going to be angry instead of offering you a proper explanation instead of probably you know apologizing to you for whatever they have done they might in turn be angry with you okay and it is it is not very good right because you may be wrong as well you may have mis- mistaken it you know there there is all p- sorts of possibility for miscommunication misunderstanding right so <coughs> always be polite use words that are least rude okay even though you are complaining you don't have any right to be angry at people okay angry anger is not a very good emotion especially not a very good emotion when it comes to expressing it to strangers all right try to avoid that use very very polite words use good you know words of courtesy so here are some some of the phrases that you can uh, normally use like sorry to bother you but i'm sorry to say this but i'm afraid i've got a complaint about i'm afraid there is a slight problem with excuse me but there is a problem about see this is one of my favorites um here yeah. this one excuse me but there is a problem about or this one sorry to bother you because we are bothering them we are they are doing whatever they need to do they are doing the job but it is quite possible that they are unaware of whatever whatever mistake they have committed so it since we are putting it forward in uh, to them we, since we are highlighting it in somehow it is better to do it with in a polite manner in a polite sense so here are some of the examples i have a complaint to make your pizza it's just too salty right you ordered pizza and that pizza is really salty what do you do instead of saying what the heck your 